Hey everyone, I know it's been a minute, but the new dungeon, Warlord's Ruin, has premiered to an amazing smashing success. It's one of the best dungeons inside of Destiny 2, and we're going to show you how anybody can solo flawless this dungeon. Now, maybe you think you need to be someone like Snazzy Rock, or maybe Esoteric or Saltagreppo to attempt a solo flawless on a dungeon, and I'm telling you, you do not. As always with all of my guides, we're gonna keep it simple. We're not gonna be using any raid weapons. We're not gonna do any crazy swaps and we're not gonna do any crazy strategies either. All the weapons and armor that I use here are easily accessible to the solo player. No crazy strats means that there's no one-off, one-phase kind of variations of how you'd need to do damage. This is a great video by Snazzy Rock in which he one-phases the boss in the dungeon. However, it took him hours to do this. My strategies are going to be foolproof simple and easy to use. I'm going to show you where to stand, what gear to use, and also if you do have some raid weapons or some better weapons than I suggest in the video, you can totally use them. My idea here is to basically show you the strategies that you can use with whatever your gear set is so that you can solo flawless this dungeon with a little bit of practice and a little bit of time. In this video, I'm going to be using a Titan to do this, and I'll be using four specific loadouts, one for each of the encounters and one for transversal sections. All of the links for the Destiny Item Manager builds will be in the description box below, so check those out. Hunters and Warlocks, before you start madly typing in the comment sections, your videos will be coming shortly. Many of the strategies I use in this video will be applied to those videos as well, so get subscribed so you don't miss a single thing. One critical thing that will not change at all is the artifact. The most important mod you can have is solo operative. I do realize you have to level a little bit to get this, but it's so critical to make your solo experience better. Next up, I have Kindling Trigger, which Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to Unscorched combatants. Really good for the builds we're using. And then combine that with Flint Striker, where Rapid Weapon Kills or Precision Hits grants Radiance. Really solid. For weakening some bosses, we're going to be using Revitalizing Blast, where causing damage with a solar ability will weaken champions and bosses for a short period of time. Those mods together are really nice. For our Rocket Launcher sections, we're going to be using Argent Ordnance, as well as this very important mod which increases ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants. All of these mods together, so important. Those two from whence you came in solo operative, probably the most critical that you can get. And while it does take a little time to level up to get access to the artifacts, trust me, it is worth it. To get access to the dungeon itself, you have to talk to Ikora, get a quest step, and then it will be in the EDZ. For this particular video, I'm not going to be covering every single chest location, in this dungeon, they're actually randomized so that you can't always get the same loot from the same safe chest. If you look here in this area, you can see that there's like this blue kind of light flame coming from all the chests. The one chest that doesn't have it is the safe chest. Sometimes you can see the blue flame. Sometimes you have to rotate around the chest. But if you open up the wrong chest, you will die to the scorn around them. So since this is a solo flawless run, I would say just don't open up the chests. In addition, I'm not going to cover any of the secrets included for the exotic sidearm, the buried bloodline here in this video. We'll just be covering the strategies that you need to know to solo flawless this dungeon. To save time as you're practicing your reps, just basically follow the path that you see here on screen and don't fight any of these enemies. You can literally just run right by them. If you're using Strand, you can just grapple hook all the way across the bridge and head to the first encounter. For each one of the encounters, I'm going to be showing you the build that I use and then offer suggestions of other things that you might have in your inventory. You could use that instead. For this first encounter, I'm going to be using the Strand Banner of War Titan. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to weaken the boss using a tractor cannon and then stack that with a one two punch shotgun of your choice along with syntheseps to do an insane amount of damage you can certainly use worm god crest to stack up more damage you can actually one phase the boss like this but it takes significantly more skill to do i find that the syntheseps is just more consistent and more people have access to it here are the aspects and the fragments you should be using basically the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you get woven mail so that you can stay alive and you can generally do that by just meleeing a couple of enemies and then punching the boss into submission and using your super blade fury when you can if you don't feel comfortable with this build you can certainly use lament and use that sword damage you basically just go through 
through the encounter a couple more times. For damage resistance, definitely have on solar damage mods as well as melee damage resistance that will help you against the boss. Void weapon surge and then heavy ammo finder since you're using tractor cannon. Let's show you one phase of how I do this. First, start up the boss fight and then head to one of the two sides where you have cover away from the boss so he doesn't shoot you in the face. As soon as the Scorn spawn in, hit one of them with the melee and then throw the tangle to get all of the enemies cleared and then start to work on the other enemies as well. The boss is eventually going to teleport you into one of these cages and then you need to find three of the taken blights that you need to shoot. The biggest piece of advice I can give is to not panic when you get to this section. Controller players especially rotate as quickly as possible and then also look above and below you to see if you maybe missed one of the taken blights at this point you need to clear as many of the scorn sensors or totems as you possibly can for every single one of those sensors that you clear you'll actually extend the damage phase for a longer period of time if you don't get more than one that's okay you don't need a ton here's what a great damage phase looks like with this build I'll also go through it in slow motion so you can see what I'm doing in each phase. You'll see here, I get him down to more than half of his health, which is really good, especially since I didn't get a second totem cleared. Here's all that in slow motion. I can actually hit him before the damage phase starts. I'm gonna hit him with my one-two punch shotgun and then hit him with all of my charged melees. As soon as I'm done with that, pop my super, hit him with one heavy attack to sever him, and do more damage with your melee attacks then. I generally do a right trigger or a heavy attack and then three light attacks. At this point, just keep repeating that until your super runs out. Just by alternating one heavy attack, three light attacks, and just keep spamming it and try to hit him as much as possible. When you come out of your super, reapply if you can tractor cannon and one two punch. You can see there, I actually didn't get the tractor cannon off again, and I still got him to half damage. One quick note, if you have a lot of enemies around when you're doing boss damage, you could potentially miss your melees, and with these scorns, since they have shields, they can actually block it, which is really annoying. So try to clear as many of them as you can. If not, try to pop your heavy super attack to kill them, and try to continually focus on the area where the boss is to get that damage. Now at this point, it's just basically a waiting game, trying to get your super back, staying alive, rinsing and repeating this section. When the boss spawns more enemies every other time he'll actually spawn four really heavy hard to kill scorn that have these lamps right here on screen you can usually hit them with a tractor or two but you need to make sure the most important thing here is to stay alive sometimes i've actually waited just to get my super back all the way to do a damage phase that way i make sure that i don't die to something stupid like the boss stamping but if you're comfortable and you can go for just a couple of melee shots you can also use a grapple to get an extra free melee if you have that opportunity but that's this entire boss he's very easy to farm very easy to kill as long as you are comfortable using these mechanics make sure that you try to keep woven mail up by killing other enemies and using a melee from time to time and this boss will be a gg at this point you're going to get teleported into jail let's explain how that works to get out of jail you need to find these cogs that are all over the walls here and you need to get them to spin either clockwise or counterclockwise to help see them a little bit better i really recommend using a viced weapon you'll see a red outline and it doesn't matter what type you use when you aim down the scopes you can actually see a red outline around things that you can shoot what you're going to do then is you're going to look to the skeleton to the left of the room that you're in it will be pointing to some white marks on a stone that tells you how many of the cogs need to be rotating clockwise also there's a skeleton over here if you're running with another team they communicate that together and that tells you how many need to be rotating counterclockwise basically they're just deviations of six so if you see four white ones that means that there's two orange ones do the math it's really easy to figure out find the six cogs shoot them once to get them going counterclockwise counterclockwise and then shoot them a couple more times to get them going clockwise you can look around the walls and i'm showing you the locations of all of the cogs here on screen so if you've never seen them before if you've never seen this puzzle you can actually see that here one of the things you do need to watch out for is just double check before you shoot the bar that we're going to shoot at the end and then jump up through that passageway here 
shoot this cog which is the final cog and then if you look over to the right you should see a glowing kind of switch shoot that and now you're out of jail get your loot and then get on out I'm going to speed up sections of this video so that it doesn't take an hour to go through everything. If you need to slow down and see the path, you can just use the cog or the settings menu down below the YouTube settings and go from there. The big thing down here is to watch out for traps. You need to jump over certain holes as well as to make sure either to duck or jump over different areas. For example, right here, there are some spike traps that will kill you, especially right here with this wretch. You can see here on the side of the walls, I jumped to avoid those. Turn to the right here, go through this cave cave you'll end up in another pathway look around until you find a way out again always be watching the walls for those little grates for the spikes as well as making sure that you jump over any of these areas if you need to figure out the path to go i generally found that the area with the lights whether they're red or the orange banners or things like that generally show you where you need to go in addition i generally find that enemies do spawn up where there are traps so if you see a bunch of those scorn enemies just be careful here kill them before you start to move forward in this area jump over the area with the hole don't go over to the area with these spikes go to the area and jump over of course and then follow the path that you see here on screen knock out any of the enemies that do spawn up and then use this area here as a jumping puzzle you can also use strand to kind of speed through it and then get outside once you're outside be careful of these rock platforms that could fall underneath you just follow the path that you see here on screen to stay alive. I'm going to point out a couple of the rock faces that you could actually die to and that will collapse when you put weight on them. One easy thing you can also do is just ride the right side of the castle. You can see me here do in a minute. So over here is the right side of the castle. Follow that path and you're good to go. Now, there's a couple of things you can do here. I actually changed to Thunderlord since I'm doing a solo flawless run. I want to make sure I stay alive. I'm not going to skip these enemies because I don't want it to die. If you feel like you can take the risk, you can skip all of these enemies or take some time and take them out. That is your choice. Watch out for all these scorn frogs. They're going to be hopping over the bridge. There's also going to be some snipers across the way. You can take them out if you want to, or you can just speed by them. Again, I'm doing a solo flawless run, so I'm being careful whenever I can. Now, at this point, the boss also spawns and will do some insane damage to get him out. Jump over the chasm and find the abomination that spawns inside of the castle. Once that abomination is gone, the boss will leave as well. I'll go into the sewer grates here and follow the path that you can go through, and then you're at the second encounter. For the ogre, I'm going to be using a special combination of a couple of weapons that are easy to find. First of all, we're going to be using the Pyrogale Gauntlets, which are the new exotic gauntlets, along with the Sunbreaker Titan's Burning Maul. We're going to stack that with Roaring Flames to do some insane damage to the boss. And then for weapon damage, we're going to be using Leviathan's Breath. Now, I have the catalyst for this, and I would highly recommend only using this method if you have the catalyst, but the catalyst for this is very easy to get. If you don't like using Leviathan's Breath, you can certainly use a dragon's breath combination or you can use a different rocket launcher if you'd like but i find that this is the easiest to do because leviathan's breath will stun the boss and keep him from moving which allows you to do some insane damage to him here's how it works you're going to stack up roaring flames with our little throwing hammer here which will also heal us i'll also be using a healing grenade here are the aspects and fragments you are going to be using but basically, you're going to try and get as much damage to the boss by making yourself radiant, using restoration to keep yourself healed, and building up sunspots throughout the encounter, especially during the boss damage phase. Then you're going to use Leviathan's Breath while radiant to do some insane damage to him. And because you're using void weapons, make sure you have triple void weapon surge on. When you're talking about resistances, make sure that you have arc resistance, void resistance, and melee damage resistance that will help you stay alive throughout this particular encounter. I'm going to be using Null Composure, which is available at the Exotic Kiosk in the Tower to everybody. Finally, I'm going to be using this Stasis Bow with Headstone for my primary. Now, you're probably wondering why. For some reason to me, it seems like when you kill enemies and then proc headstone and then kill those crystals, it seems to spawn up more heavy ammo, which is really critical for this fight. Combine the headstone perk here with the little mini hammer, and you can actually stun enemies really easily. If you're one of those people that constantly lose your little mini hammer because you're constantly throwing it, that's because you're not using the custom controller and keyboard settings. If you go to the menu, you can actually go to custom and set up your charged melee and uncharged melee settings, whether that's on controller or mouse and keyboard. 
This will give you the ability to choose when you want to actually throw the hammer itself or if you just want to punch normally, whether there are enemies that are close to you or not at all. After you pick up your hammer, remember to look at your actual charge meter to see when you can throw it again. Of course, you'll want to make sure for any weapons that you can to make sure you put on Taken Spec on your weapon. You can get that from the Last Wish raid chests. Since the boss is taken and lots of the enemies are taken, it will help out significantly in this fight. And now it's time for the Locust of Wailing Grief. This is something that I'm surprised that other videos don't talk about. I'm going to be staying all the way over to the right hand side over where this castle and all these kind of ruins are. There are so many people I've seen die because they go over to that left area. Don't go over there unless if you absolutely have to. Here's why. You can stand here in perfect cover and kill almost all of the enemies. You worry about a couple of scorn that spawn up here and from the stairs but they're really easy to kill. And also you can use this area to farm ammo and just basically stay alive. You never have to worry about the boss damaging you. This is borderline eight she's for this section. As I do with all my guides, I'm gonna give you an order of operations. And the first thing is to kill all of the taken eyes, except for one. If you hit all of the eyes, it will start spawning scorn enemies and you don't want to deal with that right now. At this point, once you're done with killing all the Taken Eyes, you then need to kill all the Taken Minotaurs that are around on the ground. Once you do that, you're not going to have to kill them until the damage phase is over. They also do an insane amount of damage, and it's a lot easier just to knock them out and maybe farm some ammo right now. Now, you can do this at a distance, but you can also go onto the ground and use your hammer to kill them or your fusion rifle. But do be careful because they will fall back as you push out, and that can be dangerous if you're not used to it. Another important tip is that you will notice that I never double jump in this area. That's because this area is not OSHA approved. And if you double jump in the air, the chances of the ogre smacking you off the edge are significantly high. For an example of this, let's watch Datto. Knock out the last eye once you're ready to do damage, and then you can sit right here waiting for the Scorn Knight to get here, and you can hit him with the hammer to stun him and weaken him, and then shoot him a couple more times, basically until he's one or two shot. Then try to bring him back over here to this area. If you want, you can put a barricade to the left so the ogre doesn't hit you. All you're waiting for is for him to put one of those Scorn totems down. There's going to be a debuff called Biting Cold. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but basically, you want to try and get two of those Scorn totems stacked on top of each other and since they're in this area very close together you'll be able to cleanse both of them very easily now the biting cold debuff will kill you if you get to times nine but there are torches along the back side of this castle area that will give you shelter from the storm which will remove that debuff the great part about this spot is that the ogre can't really hit you because there's the cover here to the right and then you've got two of the orbs you need for damage phase. As soon as the storm is over, it's going to spawn two of these Scorn Raiders here that are snipers that are pretty nasty. I knock them out as soon as possible because they can kill you if you're not paying attention. At this point, knock out all of the eyes. And again, you can just stay here and cover. You do not need to deposit those two orbs for damage. They'll just sit there in those little spots over in the middle until you're ready for the next damage phase. Once you've killed all the eyes and maybe farmed a little bit for ammo, you literally just repeat this process until you have four orbs in the middle. Again, this is really easy. You have plenty of cover here. You can take out the score knight very easily. You can make sure you're in cover. Sometimes he does not spawn up a sensor right away. Sometimes he doesn't spawn at all. Make sure that you are close enough to the torch so you can get the shelter from the storm. It's always better to stay alive and make sure that you don't die. Always keep your eye on the biting cold. When I'm here at about time six or seven, that's when I book it as quickly as possible. This was probably a little tight for me. But other than that, it's really easy to do. There's no reason to go to that left side when you're spawning up all the orbs you need in the middle. Farm up all the ammo that you need. Sit here and knock out the eyes safely in cover. Just make sure you take care of those two snipers. When you're ready to actually go do damage, again, kill all but one of the eyes, and then you'll need to deal with the sniper scorn on the opposite side of the map. Now, since we've been staying over here, the two scorn snipers over on the left-hand side have spawned in and haven't gone anywhere. So I generally take them out from a distance if I can, or I can run over to the left-hand side safely and take them out. Sometimes 
because they'll teleport all over again do not double jump this is also a good point to start chucking your hammer or using your normal melee and making sure that you have roaring flames once you're ready to do damage, I would make sure you re-up Roaring Flames, then grab one of the solar charges and head to the middle. It does not matter what order you deposit them in. The biggest thing to know is that the last orb that you deposit is where you're going to start damage. I particularly like to do damage from left to right, so I'm going to set up the charges in reverse order, just basically right to left. Nothing crazy about this, just be careful. And if you need to re-up your charges here, you can see my headstone bone generating ammo. Always be careful to make sure that you re-up your roaring flames just to make sure that when you are ready, you are ready to do damage. You don't want to be waiting around all day and potentially have something happen. I always try to knock out a couple of enemies, even just with normal punches to keep Roaring Flames times three going. And that way, in case if I am in trouble, I can re-up it. Again, here, some Taken sometimes spawn and I'll give him a punch to re-up Roaring Flames times three. And now here, we're about to do damage. Re-up Roaring Flames, make sure you have tons of time change to your heavy weapon before you grab it if you can then come over where you're going to do damage posit the solar orb and once you're done with that wait for just a second throw your hammer and then pop your super i threw the hammer just a little bit early there you want to make sure he doesn't stay immune but at this point just start spamming leviathan's breath you'll see he gets stunned insanely easily and you can basically just chill in the sunspot and stay alive once the timer goes down to zero biting cold will start back up you'll hop into a circle now this second area here is where i try to kill all of the taken that try to rush up on me use a sunspot to knock them out and continue to do an insane amount of damage with leviathan's breath if you lose your hammer in this section make sure that you still have your healing grenade you can use that as you transverse over to this next platform once you're done with that just continue to do damage as much as possible if you've generated enough heavy ammo on the ground you can just keep re-upping the bow and you don't have to worry about reloading a couple of scorn enemies may rush you at this point here's a perfect opportunity for me to look around for ammo and once you are to this final spot here chuck your hammer if you still have it that will weaken the boss hit him with one more shot or how many shots you have and it just try to do as much damage as you can with your fusion rifle at this point, you've basically got him down to a third of health. I have done so much damage that I've gotten him to half damage with this, but that was a perfect setup. I had all the ammo I needed, but you can see here, very chill, very easy. As soon as you are done with this, head back up into your little castle and watch out for any spawns of scorn. At this point, you've probably lost your hammer. You might not have your healing grenade. Just chill here in cover and wait for all of your stuff to regenerate. At least have your hammer so you can regen and you're set to go. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat and you're basically just trying to generate as much heavy ammo as you can from the enemies in the middle and stay alive. It's one of the reasons why I really like this strategy with Leviathan's Breath. It's very safe. It's almost foolproof. It takes very little stress to do. It's very easy to do. The biggest thing is don't get frustrated if it takes more than three phases. Generally, it will take three phases. I've done it in as little as two, but you may need an additional phase just because you may not get the heavy ammo on the ground that you want. Being patient is going to be incredibly important for the final boss as well. So learning that skill here is going to help you in the end. If you don't have Leviathan's Breath, you can certainly use Dragon's Breath, but this is one of the reasons why I don't do it. You can actually die to it very easily if you're not paying attention. Here's an example. Long story short, just choose the gear and weapons that you feel most comfortable with. Once you grab your loot, move forward, and then go into the next jumping puzzle. You'll come up to this area with the Scorn chests. Again, make sure that you grab the correct one. If you are going to, since it's a solo flawless run, you may not want to chance it. But again, look for that blue light coming from the chest. When you get to this next area in the Blighted Keep, a little bit of a jumping puzzle, but then you'll come up to a ton of Scorn and Taken enemies. Since you did all that work in the first two phases, it'd be silly to die here. So just take your time. Again, I pulled out Thunderlord to wreck this area. And at this point, then I pulled out my trans Versal build, which is basically just a high jump build. I'm using Lion Rampants, I'm using a sword, and I'm also using Malfeasance to knock out some different enemies. When you get to this area here, you're going to see this wretch that's going to be off in the distance. You have to be careful around him because he can jump backwards. Sit here for a second and do enough 
damage so he progresses to the next rock he can actually come back and hit you and knock you off the edge if you're not paying attention at this point you're just going into the taken storm area if you need to change for any long distance enemies i'll just change back to my bow but basically i'm just going to ride along the right side of the wall right here is a rock that's going to collapse when i step on it you'll also find a bunch of scorn that are worshiping one of their totems in an alcove just leave them alone for the solo flawless run there's actually three areas in this dungeon that feature those kind of scorn that are worshiping their totems and we don't know what that is right now but we're pretty sure that there's another secret area in inside of the dungeon so stay tuned again stay on the right side of the wall if you need to take out your sword take it out and then go from there go through this next section and then be careful as you approach the next area this is an area with a whole bunch of taken enemies that will try to boop you off the edge and there are two giant areas where they can do that that you can fly off the edge of the mountain I keep my sword and lion rampants on, make a sunspot if possible by throwing your little mini hammer like I did right on screen and just knock them out. There will be two waves of enemies. Once you get to this section, just follow the path that you see here on screen. Way up on top is another one of those scorn worshiping areas. All the way to the left is a secret chest. Be careful as you're doing this jumping puzzle here. There's going to be some platforms that will collapse, plus some Taken that are going to try and push you off the edge. Again, the Null Composure does great work here as well as Malfeasance. This area here is very dangerous because you can't do damage to the boss, but yet you have to take care of a bunch of enemies that are blocking the door. The biggest thing here is just to make sure you keep your distance and stay alive. It's very easy to get lulled into a false sense of security and tell yourself, oh, you're not in a boss damage fight. Just make sure you no, you can die here very easily. Climb the steps and then you will be at the final boss fight. For the final boss encounter, we're going to be using a combination of our Sunbreaker Super as well as Dragon's Breath, which is available to everybody and then a sniper of your choice. Let's talk about something that's very important right now though, and that's the fact that Restoration is bugged in Destiny currently. So Restoration is the thing that gives you health and shields over time when you're standing in a sun spot, and because it's bugged, we don't always get the health and the shields regeneration like we need to so we need to force the game to give us as many sunspots as possible so that we can restore our health as much as possible we're going to be using our hammer of soul super to do damage and also to stay alive along with our little throwing hammer a healing grenade of course and then we're going to be using ember of torches and empyrean to get radiant and then stay radiant and extend restoration but we're also going to be using char and ashes to basically light the ground on fire in combination with the mods from our artifact. This will allow us to stay alive and create tons of sunspots so we can stay radiant and also do insane damage. We're going to be using Syntheseps along with our super, but if you do want to use Worm God Caress, you certainly can. It takes a little bit more skill to keep the uptime on using it out. I just find Syntheseps is a little bit easier to use. In addition, I'm going to be using Dragon's Breath, like I said earlier, and we're going to shoot this and use it kind of like Anarchy, where you're going to shoot this. It's going to do damage to the boss over time, inflicting Scorch. I would recommend if you can get the Catalyst, it will help out significantly some kind of weapon with Incandescent of your choice. Do not use a weapon with Heal Clip. Remember that issue I was talking about with Restoration? Well, this seems to actually exacerbate it. I find that this has a problem when you're on a solar subclass and it screws with the timing of restoration so only use this if you're on a non-solar super and then of course a sniper of your choice i'm using this world sniper that i have but a lot of high-end pve players are using the supremacy with rewind rounds or any kind of a sniper with rewind rounds if you don't have either of those you can certainly use a long shadow with triple tap it'll do a little bit less damage and have a little less ammo capacity but you could use that or any sniper in this slot for our damage surges, we're going to be using Solar Weapon Surge along with Dragon's Breath, as well as for our resistance, we're going to be using Void Resist, Solar Resist, and Concussive Dampener are going to help us basically tank the boss damage. And then there's a bunch of solar that comes from the Scorn Knights that could potentially kill us, and we want to make sure that we stay alive. When we start to go into boss damage, I'm going to switch one thing around, and that's where I'm going to change from using a solar resistance mod to an arc resistance mod that will help us stay alive when all of those little taken turrets are trying to shoot at us. And then, of course, some kind of a chest plate that helps us to extend our reserves, but I'll only be switching this when I'm completely safe and I'm not changing any of my other loadouts during the fight. 
All right, it's time to knock out this giant taken meatball. And the first thing I do is start to light the ground on fire and wipe out all of these little taken thrall. The goal here is to create as many sunspots as possible and get as many solar explosions as possible. While standing in those sunspots, you can take out lots of enemies in safety. The one exception is to these wizards who will absolutely destroy you. So instead, take a little time, move around cover, and knock out those two wizards while also taking out the taken thrall. These two wizards will spawn up every time you're done with the damage phase or when the phase resets. At this point, there's also going to be Taken Blights on the ground. You're going to want to knock them out as quickly as possible, too, because they have a Taken Booping mechanic that actually will knock you into the air. At this point, I use my Sniper or my primary weapon to take out all of the eyes but one, just like we did during the second phase with the Ogre. Take out all the eyes but one. That way, you can kind of get your bearings, get all the stuff cleared off the field, and then you can get ready to do a damage phase. While doing this and getting prepped, make sure that you're hitting the little taken enemies with your hammer to keep roaring flames going. And when you're ready to do damage, shoot the last eye and get started. Now, in this section, there is a ton of things going on. So I want to show you what it looks like first, and then I'm gonna break it down in slow motion so you know all the things that I'm doing, because there's like four things you're doing at the same time. And this can overwhelm you if you don't mentally prepare yourself to do this. So this is going to happen on every platform until you get to the longer damage phase at the end. Here's the slow motion replay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get the score knights to make totems. Now there's two ways to do this. First of all, you can just allow them to live long enough so that they will spawn one up generally when that happens that's when i kill them and if you kill them they make another scorn totem so right here he's going to create a scorn totem that gives me the notice that i can knock him out and create a second scorn totem basically in the same area now i actually shot a dragon's breath shot to the left to try and take care of the knight on the opposite side if i do this i could potentially extend my boss damage time but while you're doing this you also need to be taking care of the taken blights and taken adds that spawn up this will help keep you from taking excessive damage as well as controlling the battlefield Whenever you start this damage phase, you'll get a debuff called the Hex of Vengeful Corruption. The only way to get rid of it is to melee attack or punch this Scorn enemy called the Hex Drinker. Now, the Hex Drinker can give you the debuff back if they come up and punch you. So the safest way I've found in dealing with those Hex Drinkers is to clear out the Scorn totems on one side. If you get one or two, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is to give that Hex Drinker the debuff at the last possible moment or when you can run away from them. It's kind of like a game of hot potato. You want them to die while holding the debuff. Now, when you do this, if you've cleared the knight on the opposite side, you'll have about six to seven seconds to clear out the other side of totems. Based on the amount of totems that you've cleared, the damage face will then start. You have two choices, either to pop your super if you've got that, or to start doing damage to the boss with your weapons. If I feel like there's too many taken enemies on the battlefield, I'll pop my super so I can just stand in the sunspot and do a solid amount of damage. If you have Syntheseps procced, you can easily get the boss down to the amount that it needs to teleport to the next platform. But also, if you have a sunspot created, if you kill those enemies that spawn when the boss comes in, you can change to your weapons and do some damage there. You'll see here I reapply Dragon's Breath and then shoot with my sniper a bunch of times to extend a little bit more damage. And if you've done enough damage to the boss, he'll teleport to the next area. Now here, what I do is I will kill the remaining enemies here on the field. And then I do two things. Number one, I start looking for ammunition. You can see here that there's some heavy drops here. I wanna pick up all the ammunition I can from each platform because if there's a ton of ammunition on the field, especially heavy ammo, a lot of times heavy ammo won't spawn up on the next couple of platforms. So I'm gonna take this opportunity, change my chest piece to my scavenger chest piece, and then I'm gonna pick up all the ammunition I can. I'm also going to use this trick that many people don't talk about. When the boss teleports to the next area, it will spawn up the eyes like it did down here on this first platform. I'm going to take this opportunity while I have extra sniper ammunition, and I'm going to take out a bunch of the eyes and potentially the wizards. The great part about this is I am in much better cover and a lot safer. Now, does that mean I'm completely safe? 
No, the boss can still hit you. You can see he's firing at me from the other platform. In addition, the wizards can actually start shooting you as well. So this is a great opportunity while you have free ammo on the ground here on this first platform to take care of the wizards and take care of a bunch of the eyes. You want to make sure you don't kill all of the eyes because if you do, that will start the damage phase with the Hex Drinkers and the Scorn Totems spawning up, and you'll have a limited amount of time. So during this, look around for ammo, and then when you're ready, jump up to the second platform and start to repeat that process. Now, in this area specifically, I like to use this far right side where there's a lot of cover on the left here. I like this because it gives you a lot of cover from the eyes. Also, there's fewer pieces of the Taken Blights that will spawn up, and the enemies will generally be funneled in a good area. The only issue issue with this is that if you didn't kill the wizards beforehand you've got to go out of cover to kill them an easy way to do this is to create sunspots on the ground run to them and use them for cover now during this section i'm rebuilding my super but i'm basically repeating all the things i did on the first platform kill all the taken enemies make sure that the blights don't kill you and clear them once you've done that shoot the last eye that you've left up and that will start the damage phase it'll give you the debuff and this is a good opportunity for you to punch a couple of the enemies that will spawn with this scorn enemy right here i love this area because you can basically stay safe from the other scorn knight because of the wall on the left hand side build up a bunch of sun spots that will knock out this knight and then you can stand here in cover the hex drinker will literally run at you and you can basically just chill here and stay alive in a sun spot and when you're ready punch him try to extend the damage phase by clearing out some more of these scorn totems if the hex drinker comes at you just run away from him a little bit while you are clearing out the other totems now i'm going to do this damage phase a little bit differently where i actually create a sunspot by killing those taken enemies with my hammer and then i'm going to do a bunch of damage with my weapons instead of my super if you're ever in danger or you feel like you're going to die just pop your super and then you can stay alive and clear the other enemies that are around here I then repeat the process of looking for ammunition and sniping as many of the eyes and the wizards as possible before I jump up to the next platform. Now, this next platform is actually very dangerous. You're very exposed to a lot of the enemies, and there's a lot of Taken Blights on the ground. To stay alive, sit in the very back and just let the Taken come to you. The wizards generally will push up a little bit more than they did in the previous platforms, but just use your solar abilities and solar weapons to continue to knock them out, and then take care of all but one of the eyes. This will give you some time to clear out some of the Taken Blights around the battlefield and start to move up to a position where you can do damage. At this point, I'll head over to the left side knock out the last eye create some sunspots here where the scorn knight will actually spawn back up and i'll try to kill as many of the other taken enemies as possible one of the other cool things about using the little mini hammer is it can keep these scorn knights from stomping you you have to do that at the right point in their animation because like right here you can see the stomp generally if you hit him with the hammer as he's raising his leg you can keep him from stomping but sometimes he stomps no matter what but this is just the same as the other platforms. Make sure that you transfer your Vengeful Corruption debuff to the Hex Drinker. Move over and cleanse as many of the Scorn sensors as possible. If you need to, use a Healing Grenade or your Super to make sure that you stay alive and do damage. Once the boss moves to the middle, it's time for the longer damage phase. Pick up whatever ammunition you can with Solar Reserves and then also change to that Arc Damage Resistance chest piece and then you're good to go. Jump up and it's time to do damage. Here's how I handle the damage phase here i use dragon's breath and then hide behind a column and do as much damage as possible the cool thing about dragon's breath as long as you have the catalyst is that you'll continue to scorch some of the eyes on the side which will help you to extend the damage phase the more of those eyes that gets knocked out the longer you can stand on each platform but the biggest thing here is just to do as much damage as you can with the ammunition you have always be reapplying your dragon's breath and if you need to pop a barricade to stay alive a quick tip is if you need to, you can always jump down to the lower platforms if you think you're going to die if you want to end the damage phase early, but keep that healing grenade in reserve in case you need it. I generally do as much damage as I possibly can. Once my sniper shot runs out, reapply Dragon's Breath and then pop your super and do as much damage to the boss before you hop down to stay alive. 
once I'm done with the damage phase, I'll actually hop off because you can still die to the boss or the eyes. At this point, change your chest piece back to your solar damage resistance chest piece and then start at the first platform and repeat the whole process again until you get to final stand. Once the boss takes enough damage to get to his final stand marker, which is the line in his health, the boss will teleport you and him to this top platform to stay alive. Hide behind this right column. That way you have more cover instead of the left and then just go to town on the boss with the ammo that you have continue to reapply dragon's breath which will apply scorch to all of those taken eyes basically just make sure that you stay in cover and when you are ready and at full health that's when you pop out and then do damage when you're ready and if the boss health is low enough you can just pop your super and knock out the meatball cook him to call it gg for the warlord's ruin and get your solo flawless done if you have some questions or need some help come on over to twitch.tv slash manodestra where we do tons of pve helps inside of destiny 2 if anything inside of this video helped you out a way to show your gratitude is to like the video share it with some people who may need some help with it and of course subscribe for more destiny 2 content good hunting guardians i'll see you next time in the universe of destiny